Bienvenidos a la Midwest Flyers Podcast. I am your host, Joy Basayo. <laughs> we got Cal Ness, and then what we up? also have our brother. It's not just Cal's. It is also mine, Mike and Ness. Thanks for having me. We all, we all grew up together. I think that most people who listen to this podcast on a regular basis know that me and you grew up together. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, blood brother. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, right. Would you say that out of the four of us, who... <laughs> no, no, ask it. Ask it. No, I want you to ask it, dude. No, ask it. <laughs> this is going to be good. And it, there's a multitude of who, options. So, it's Cal, Isaac, Micah, Joey... Out of the four of us, who was the crybaby of the neighborhood? Oh, for sure, Joey. I mean, there's <laughs> so? there's just no question about it. This kid was crying weekly. Weekly. <laughs> yeah. No, I weekly? don't Weekly? I probably cried my fair share, but that was Dude. I was getting abused. Can I was you getting physically and mentally I was going to say Cal. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew Joey was going to say me for sure. I just remember 100%. playing kickball and Cal getting upset and yeah. crying and leaving. I think when I was a kid, you guys <laughs> called me Cal. Yeah. That was Joey. I think that was just Joey. It was good for you. Cal. Yeah, it hardened me. It was good for you. 100%. Yet, the pride and the ego are still at the 10. At the 10. No, that's not true. (laughs) We have Carter here, too. You Speaking of... Nah, fuck that guy. (laughs) (laughs) True. True, 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 true. You don't even get a camera today. Nope. Uh, This podcast is brought to you, by the way, by Ducks Unlimited, and Joey's sporting a brand new sick rope hat from Ducks Unlimited, and... If you live in the Midwest, which a lot of you that listen to this do, Ducks Unlimited is doing a ton of awesome work in our area specifically. Prairie Pothole region, very heavy influence. So go support Ducks Unlimited at du. Is it? It's ducks.org. It's ducks.org. I think you go to du.org and it works too. I mean, ducks. Ducks.org. ducks.org. Just go to ducks.org. So go do that. Support Ducks Unlimited so we can have more ducks in the Midwest. Micah. You don't live in the Midwest anymore. I don't, but they're a nationwide organization, I'm pretty sure. They are. Um, how <laughs> are the ducks where you are? Few and far between. Where are you, bud? We're, uh, so I'm in Steamboat. I'm in uh, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. You yeah. look like you're from Steamboat know, these days. I know. Time. You look like you're from it's Steamboat. Like, little, is it, is it the little hipster Westie. mustache? Or is it's, it? the, it's the hipster Westie yeah. look. You got a flannel on, middle of summer. Right. Unacceptable. <laughs> Right, Very we just got we just got summer, so. and you got a womb broom on. What's that? Oh no! Oh, sure, the stash. Yeah, yeah, big old stash. Flavor saver. But we're in the northeast corner, so we're we're pretty close to Wyoming. Not we're up in the mountains, though. We're our elevation of our town is you know seventy seventy five hundred feet. Damn. So, so um, I've heard <coughs> in that area there's kind of this weird family. You just literally spilled that beard on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a mm-hmm. family of mallards, a school, as some might call them. Mm-hmm. They live on a hotel. Yeah, tell us about yep. that. There's a guy downtown feeds them corn <laughs> on the roof of the hotel. Just fucking tornadoes. You'll go and hunt in terrible weather. It's gonna migrate today. Got to be a couple stragglers got lost on the way. You'll go downtown. Four hundred ducks in a tornado swarming this dude's <laughs> shitty hotel. Really? And they just land on it, and that's... Yeah. Was it like a big flat roof, and they just chill yep. up there? Yep, <laughs> exactly. Beat down Best Western, and it just fucking <laughs> rains mallards. <laughs> there I was always actually, think this it's is, so funny. This is kind of funny. There was a kid this uh, this winter, because all the all the ducks are, are downtown where you can hunt, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'll shoot a few out there. Yeah. Um, there's this kid down there at the river. We're fishing, and this kid's down there with a bow and arrow, and he... Yes. He literally sniped a duck. Yes. Um, in the park? Cons- in the park, on the river. Just <laughs> this kid. So there's a trailer park How like, old right is by this the river. Kid? Yeah. Definitely just a little trailer park kid with a bow and arrow. Got it for Christmas. Said, let's go and smack a few ducks. And so he did. This duck's just going downstream with an arrow through it. <laughs> 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 hey, bud, you can't do that. Oh. <laughs> How old is this kid? I don't know. Maybe 12. 12? Maybe. This kid's running around in the park with a bow and arrow at 12 shooting yeah. dogs. Hey, bud, he said it was a trailer park. Well, what do you, what do you expect? Well, the trailer really park nice by river. the park. There's a trail next to the river, so I must have 
Those trailers cost more than our houses, right? Five hundred. Well, that's just trailer. well, that's just because <laughs> wait because of where it's located. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the trailer itself is not five hundred thousand sure. dollars. It's the property it's sitting. Oh, on. Yeah, it's crazy. You don't even own the land though with the, <laughs> with trailer. the trailer. So I'm not sure what. Not sure how that works. There. Not sure how that works. Mm. But trippy. Yeah. Trippy. Trippy. But land's just ridiculously expensive out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're just gonna rent forever. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hopefully not. I'm gonna have. A, so I was thinking about buying a piece of land, and then you and Cal and probably Carter too can come out. Just come volunteer and, and build my Could house. Absolutely not. No, <laughs> no. I, I no. can take pictures of it though. Okay. No, Carter That'll will work. sit there and whine the ah. entire time. <laughs> probably. Probably. So probably. maybe yeah. we should it's maybe. I'll just here. call you then. It's cold <laughs> out here. <laughs> it's muggy. I actually want to see Carter frame. I can't breathe because it's 7,800 elevation. Okay, allergy boy. I don't want to hear it from you. I'm not complaining. You were. (laughs) I just said you were. I I mean, you were. Was I complaining or was I telling you my situation? You were complaining. Yep. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit. Fuck (laughs) y'all. That's okay. Yeah, I would love to see Carter frame. (laughs) I wouldn't. It'd be funny. I wouldn't. Hey, dude, cut this at 76 and an eighth. (gasps) Walking walls. What's that? Walking walls. Well, he couldn't eighth. even get on the wall. He's got balance. He's been training. Yeah. You were just going to beat that Absolutely, I am. dead ass horse. 100%. That thing is buried 10 feet under the ground. I'm digging her back up. You're just dug it up. Dug it back up. Oh, my God. Whoops. Oh. Yeah. I know, dude. It's bad. Um, Micah started actually hunting before me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell us about, like, when you first started hunting. Who'd you duck hunt with first? Yeah. Was um, it me? No, it wasn't you. I was a kid in high school. That's right. Buddy of yours? That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time, so I honestly don't remember. Yeah. But. Yeah, he was he was mean. He was like a pissed <laughs> off stepfather. He was a grade younger than me. And he was took just it too serious. Into, took it so seriously. Like, yell at you and shit. You know? <laughs> and like, dude, you're two years younger than me. Why are you yelling at me? It's four in the morning. <laughs> but... <laughs> We killed some ducks, and he showed me the way. And then I hunted with Joey, and yeah, and Cal said, "This is cool. Yeah, I could do this. Maybe for sure." Remember that day? Mm-hmm. That was a good day. That was a good day. That was a good day. We had a lot of fun that day. Yeah, ma'am. We had some good hunts. We've had some hunts terrible too. Oh god, which is that's I mean, like that's part the of best. It. Those are my favorite memories. Yeah, just yeah. terrible mornings. I got a story for you when we're off the podcast, but <laughs> to remind you of a <laughs> <Yeah>. hunt <laughs> so bad. Such what's, a bad hunt. What's the like weirdest thing that's happened to you when you've been hunting? Did you have any like weird experiences when you were younger, like around here? Anyone ever get pissed off and yell at you? No. No. I'll tell you what. He's I don't too know, respectful. One that, but also I really feel there is something <laughs> about you don't fuck with other people in the dark that have guns. I've never really ran into problems. I've ran into some people that are idiots and you're like, dude, what are you doing? But like as far as really messing with somebody, yeah. You got to be a crazy dude to go and like start some beef with somebody at five in the morning that you yeah. know has a gun and it's pitch black. Yeah. So I really haven't had two. I haven't really had bad experiences with with hunters. Weird experiences. This one's kind of funny. Not weird, but just kind of funny. <clears throat> Mariah will come out with me, and so we'll go to the few lakes, a few reservoirs, and, and steamboat, and you know we'll shoot five ducks or something on a good day. But yeah. Still have a blast. Beautiful yeah. sunrise, mountains in the background. <clears throat> Hanging out with your gal. Hanging out with my gal. And um, so I canoed across the lake, and she walked the first time she went out with me. She wouldn't get in the boat? Well, I have a I have a nine-and-a-half-foot old-town canoe. It's a solo. <laughs> and sure. I'm faster than Riley. I'm faster than Hank. I guarantee you that. You think so? Um, <laughs> you think so? <laughs> faster than my dog swimming? <laughs> yeah. I'm quick. I would, I would hope so. Yeah. Um, You're in a canoe. <laughs> faster than a dog dog paddling? Yeah, you're you're streaking. I guess that then. sounds it sounds better when you don't think about it. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot of things. So she's walking, and it's four in the morning, and she's got a little bit of a walk, and I got a little bit of a canoe, and I didn't hear shit. I'm paddling away. It's it's wet, and I don't hear anything. I'm on the lake paddling, and she's just over there screaming bloody murder, bawling her eyes out. There was like 300 coyotes that were like closing in on her. <laughs> no, and I'm not that far. Like. Not that far that I definitely should have heard her. And she's like, I get there, and she's just in the ruins, you know, <laughs> just like on the ground crying. Thought she was going to get 
pounced by 400 coyotes and you left me. You didn't hear me screaming. You didn't hear me crying, bloody murder. They like, didn't get Mike me Mike is gun. out there. Beautiful sunrise. I'm out there just like, wow, this is nice and <laughs> quiet. <laughs> we were okay, but. what Did they just leave? They just didn't, you know, they're coyotes. They're, they're a bunch of little dogs, so I don't think they're really. They're not targeting humans. They're not targeting humans. That would have been wild. Had they. Yeah, you but. come back, you can't find your girlfriend. She's just <laughs> She's mauled gone. by 300 coyotes. That would have been out. fucking insane. Did she have a gun? No, and that's why she was pissed. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, shit. I had both the guns on the boat. And Damn. Yeah. So won't do that again, probably. We won't do that. Well, yep. she can have the pistol. And yeah. It's a little something. Do you guys remember 100%. You guys remember when you were young? And what, when did you start hunting? 16? Mm-hmm. And you started at 21, 20? 20. 20. Um, there were so many times when I was a kid and I would just get put in a spot by my dad in the dark <laughs> and everyone else would like walk a couple hundred yards away. And then you just like start to realize all of the, the life around you. Sure. Swear to God, you can hear spiders. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Every, everything gets so quiet. You can feel them even if oh. they're not on you. Well, dude, he's just like, you hear every cricket, mm-hmm. you hear every snake, every muskrat, everything. But I'm eight years old. Sure. So I don't know what these noises scared, are. And so. I'm just like, shit. What was that? <laughs> oh, God. Dad. Oh, just, and I can't Dad. imagine what Mariah was feeling. She's just like, yeah, I got a, a mile walk in the dark by First myself. <laughs> this is great. 300 coyotes closing in. This is fun. Dude, she smacked him up that day. Did she? That was she pretty cool to see her, like, never duck hunting and, like, smoking a bird from 35 yards out and flying through the air. I was like, oh, yeah. Nice. That is sick. You take her out quite a bit now. She'll come out a little bit. Yeah. 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 You got a group of guys you hunt with, though? I got about two guys to hunt with. Yep. It's not a real popular thing out there. It's not. Not where you're at, at least. How'd you meet him? My buddy? Yeah, the buddies that you deck hunt. Um, Because we've talked about it a lot on the podcast. I worked, most of them I worked with. Mm. So either me being like, you know, they're hunters of other things and like, yeah, yeah, you can shoot ducks out here. You should come out with me and. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Met him through work and like hunting. If you find the right guy that just wants to be outside, that's, you know. That's basically what it is. You hear that? Not a goddamn thing. That's that's our line, you know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucking nice? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. We wake up early to go and sit in silence. Like, it's, you know. Big fan of that. Huh? Me too. Big it's a fan. Westie deal. Oh, they're saying you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Big, Big fan. fan of that sitting mm-hmm. in silence thing. Mm-hmm. I yeah. never, when I go out in like the wilderness, I don't truly ever hear silence though. Sure. Sure. It's but I, silence under- I, just, I understand what you're saying. Nothing human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is huge. Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. I've said it on the podcast too, but there was this one time I was like 20. No, I was, I was 19. I just did like a bunch of roofing work for a lawyer. I traded the roofing work for a, 14, 36 foot John <laughs> boat, this. which I know you've been in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that day just completely changed my thought process on duck hunting where I just, it's kind of snowing and it was sunny out and like the sun was coming up and I was just like, wow, there's none of this is by chance. You know, this is incredible. Yeah. And ever since then, like for sure, since that day, it's just been like ducks, ducks, mm-hmm. ducks. So. Yeah. It was silence watching the whole world wake up around me. Right. Loved it. The snow is nice too. It's real quiet. It, but it wasn't like uh it wasn't like coming down. It was just like random mm. snowflakes here and there. We could it's really the watch them coming down. The sun's poking through it. It's like a Joe Bo Jones picture. Yeah. Type of deal. It's just like, oh my God. It's sick. Nature is so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. That, that was moving. Best. Thank you for that, Joey. Yeah, he Welcome. knows how to paint a picture, bro. Wow. Thank you. Oh, he'll set it up for you, dude. <laughs> It'll get you going. Reminds me of this one time at band camp. Oh, mm-hmm. shit, huh? Yeah. Band camp. Um, so since you duck hunted, now you're in Colorado, you've gone on to a lot of other types of hunting. Mm-hmm. This year was a big year for you. Yeah. So my first bull. Bull. Bull elk. Yeah. The only bull out there. Bull cow. I was going to so say you shot some this, cattle. Yeah, some dude's cattle, just a monster bull. Yeah. <laughs> Mike is like, you're mine. <laughs> Calling them in. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> There's yep. some big bulls out there, though. There are. Black Angus. Colorado Black Angus. That's right, bro. <laughs> yep. Shot my first bull. <laughs> tell us, excited. tell us like, the story <laughs> of what happened. Because it's a sick story. I want you to tell it like you did when you first came home. 
Remember, and it had just happened. I'm trying and you to told quiver us. so much. Hopefully, my voice isn't that quivery. But yeah, tell us. Just tell us. Best. Get the adrenaline going. Set yeah, it up. So me and my buddy uh, Forrest, we had a couple days off, five days off for the hunting season. It's in October, middle of October. Such hit or miss weather that time of year. It's either you know ten inches, twenty inches of snow on the ground, or it's fall and it's sunny and nice and. Um, it had snowed six inches a day before we went out, so we knew we were going into some good weather. Um, hiked about five and a half miles each way. Oh, my God. Look, everything, you know, on your back. And so I actually brought a bike up because we came off this trail that you could – I knew that when we were done, I could bike off of. So I, I walked a bike up that morning, and that was game changer on the way back. But, uh, yeah, went up there, set up camp, <coughs> hunted for a few days, got on some elk, um, got on some bulls. So when you have a bull tag, you can, you can only shoot a bull and it's gotta be at least four points on one side. So, um, no matter what you shoot, you have to look at it, you know, and you got to get good eyes on it. You can't shoot it so far that you can't identify it. Um, naturally, naturally, uh, a lot of people though, you know, <coughs> just, just, just out there, fire from the hip, just go for it, you know, see something. So, yeah, I got on him the first couple of days. He ended up having to go into work, so I was too far in. I knew that. Uh, didn't you chase? Tell us, like, didn't you chase one though? I did chase a little bit of a herd. It's like I your last day. This was the day before I got mine, so it was like my third day. You have five days in the season. Um, That's it, huh? In a rifle season, so bow <laughs> bow is thirty. Uh, rifle rifle seasons one, two, three, four, and late are all five day hunts. Um, so it is. It is kind of crazy to think about it because, like, here's your tag. You have five days. Yeah. You never see elk the rest of the year most of the time, mm. you know. You don't really see them in the summer much. But um, what, they're breeding that time of year or what? Yep. Okay. Yep, especially first rifle. Once you get into the later rifles, they're more of they're done breeding and now they're herded up. Um, but in that season, bow season specifically, and then going into October, uh, sometimes even to late October, they're, they're in rut. So they're pissed off. They are – they have these wallows, so they're they're just peeing them, and they'll they're just peeing them. <clears throat> they pee in them, they ejaculate in them, and they roll around in them. In a wallow? In a wallow. What is that? Dude? It's just a nasty, it's like, like not even. You it's know. like they like fucking make a, a <clears throat> hole, like a little divot in the ground, pretty much, right? And then it just mm-hmm. fills with rainwater or yep. snow or melt or whatever. And then and they, they piss in it, and they that. just roll around it. I didn't know about it till you told me about it either. Yeah, but they just piss in a hole. You said they ejaculate or they piss? Mm-hmm. Damn. Both. Yep. So what they what is what's the point of it? They're just trying they're to cover just, their scent. Tr- yes, exactly. They're trying to create their scent for for females for to a smell cow and elk and, to come yeah. and smell them and, and attract like, them. Look at me. Exactly. Yeah. So it's fun because they're really they're aggressive at that time. They're year. all horned up. Mm-hmm. So you're calling. I was doing call, you know I was calling um, just with a little little mouth call. Um, yeah. Mew mew just mewing. Yeah, I don't have the bugle and anything yet. I haven't, you know, only my third year elk hunting, so this will be. So I haven't gotten into that, but that's like, you know, a whole another thing of it is challenging them with bugles and pretending like you're a you're a bull elk trying right. to defend your territory, and that's when. So you then get, they come out swinging. They come out swinging, you know, and a lot of times you're shooting with a bow when you're doing that. So, but yeah, we got on him a little bit. Um, he had to go, so we walked back to to the car i helped him pack up his car and then uh i went back out about two miles in this time solo just so you went back home though right no i actually there's a little store probably 20 minutes from where we stopped and, and you were thinking in. about it though. <clears throat> no 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 definitely okay. not no i was not gonna go home <laughs> like that um but i did go and have a beer and a burger and use the facilities and yeah. then went back out after that um yeah, and kind of found a nice little drainage they call it. So kind of a sh- steep walls, and you're kind of uh, you kind of set up with the wind. You play the wind in factor a lot. So at night, you know the thermal switch, the the air, cold air is running down these drainages. So you want to be at the bottom of them. Whereas kind of late morning, once it warms up, everything's rising. It switches yeah. and rises. So you kind yeah. of want to be on top of them. So <clears throat> I set up at the bottom of this drainage. Um, I'm a blind guy. I don't know why. I'm a blind guy, and I think it's my duck hunter in me that, like, wherever I go that I, like, really think will be a good elk hunting spot, I've, like, built a little blind. Oh, you built a blind? Not, like, legit, but, like, I'll 
grab some dead sticks and stack them up and like it's just my i really think it's my inner duck hunter because i love building blinds yeah I, it's so fun it's like <laughs> yeah. i love building forts i don't yeah, know i never fort. lost that i guess so yeah. um built a little blind had all these different shooting lanes um sat there till it got dark uh heard a bull scream you know i go shit so like timeline wise how much time do you i have sat now? there for two hours and how much time do you have left till you like can't About shoot? Forty five minutes. So. so you're hearing your first, your first bull mm-hmm. forty five minutes before shooting light. Yep. So you can shoot thirty minutes after after civil twilight. So it's thirty minutes after sunset. Um, so it's dark at that point. I mean, six o'clock you're good, but once six forty hits, it's tough. It's dark. So I heard it at about six. Sitting there, sitting there for 20 minutes. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. I'm still calling. And I'm like, you know what? I, I've i got 20 minutes to make this happen. There's no way. So I pick up everything. I start going uphill. Probably get uphill about 10 yards. And I was like, just stopped in my tracks. I was like, I'm going to completely blow this hunt if I do anything else. This was my plan. I'm literally going head on towards this bull. I don't know <laughs> what it's with. Um, I'm going to blow this hunt up. And uh, so I turned back around, went back to my blind, unpack, drop my bag, get my rifle back up. And like 10 seconds after that, this cow goes through, a cow elk goes through my shooting lane. I was like, damn, I would have completely blown that on. <laughs> so it was one of those cool, like being solo. Intuition. You're super into this, Joey, but like, and you talk about it a lot on the show and, and all, everything you do, but like solo hunting is you just, you're only, it's only you to blame. It's only you to blame if you mess up. It's only you to blame if you have a good time. It's only up to you if, you know, you enjoy it or you're miserable or you get in trouble. And there's something profound about that, you know? And so it's cool to just in the moment be like, I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> Go right back to where I was. And sure shit, cow goes through, cow goes through, cow goes through. Probably 25 cows, no joke. Just in one bull. And that they, you know, they'll group up where all these... All these cow elk, these female elk are being bred by this one bull. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're all with them for protection and Big whatever. Orgy. It really is. It's crazy. It's huge. It's such a wild, you know, dynamic. I don't know. So like 20, 20 of them go through. I've got about three minutes at this point before I can shoot this elk to the point where it's dark and still legal. But I'm looking at my watch every 10 seconds like, yeah, come on. Finally, this thing comes in two minutes before, uh, horns down. So I identified it pretty quickly that it was a, it was a nice bull. Um, walked right in the middle of my shooter lane, stopped. And I've got like a, a rest on a tree, but I'm squatting. And I'm just shaking like crazy. Man. How could you not? Be? No you know, shit. like I get shaky when a pack, you know, <coughs> some nice mallards drop in. Like the, the bull elk screaming and it's screaming for you know, 30 minutes at me, and I'm calling at it like, come and get me. (coughs) Come and get me. So it was pretty intense. How far was he? About 200, 200 yards. Really? You could identify him that far at such low light? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I guess we had so many times on him. I heard him, and I saw, yeah, I saw he was bigger than four. Bigger than four. What was it, a six by six? Yeah. That's huge. That was nice. It was a nice bowl. So... Shot him. He rolled down, stood up, shot him again. He sat there for a little while, and I actually had to go and shoot him again. So, I mean, shot him three times. Had to shoot him three times with the 300 win, which, <laughs> I hey, I didn't Holy I didn't shit. put the greatest shot on him right away, <coughs> but I was able to get a pretty good second shot, and I waited him out for a while, and after about 30 minutes, you know, he's sitting there 30 yards in front of me at this point, and I can hear him rolling around still, so went and finished it. But Yeah. They're beasts, man. They're seven hundred fifty pound animals. It's oh no, they're massive. <coughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I saw a bunch when I was driving through uh, Colorado and Wyoming in uh, December, January. Yeah, I'm like, dude, Back. these things are huge. If you hit one of those with your car, dude, yeah. done, yeah. done. Oh you're yeah, dying. <laughs> you're dying. You're yeah. dying. No, you're yeah. hitting a brick wall. It's kind of funny to see them compared to a muley or a whitetail. Oh yeah, those are, those are little dogs compared to them. You know? <laughs> yeah. So so you. You called your buddy right away too, right? Yeah, I had a uh, a Garmin in reach. Shout out to them. <laughs> no, those are no those are ads. clutch though. Sorry, no free ads. Those are clutch though. So yeah, were you using Onyx? Yeah, 
Yeah, which, yep. by the way, <laughs> <laughs> I knew Joe would get a kick out of it. Which? Oh, wait. No, Onyx is a real deal, man. Game changer in hunting, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I was able to text some buddies, though. Text some Mariah. Um, yeah. They, you know, it's about an hour drive out. and Everyone was stoked. Yeah. So, I had some buddies that were willing to come help me out. And, and I won't lie, man. Like, I have a, a really good buddy that I'm friends with, and, and he, you need somebody to, like, really skin those animals properly. You need help. You yeah. need help, and then you need someone to show you how to do it, you know, your first couple of times. You can watch every YouTube video in the entire world, and they're all great and informative. So you go out there, and you have that animal in front of you, and you're it's shaking. A lot. And you got a knife that's incredibly sharp. I mean, I cut myself like 10 times. It's just Did you really? Yeah. Nothing like crazy bad, but, like, you're just shaky, man, and it's a <laughs> lot of adrenaline right after that. And now you're going right to work. So I shot him at 6.50 or whatever, and, you know, we didn't leave there till 2 a.m., yeah, and a lot. Did did you have multiple buddies come out? Yeah, I had three buddies, so it was four of us. <coughs> yeah, and you had the bike. I had the bike. I'm sure, that not. really helped out. They on the, really on were the pack out. <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. See you guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See you at the truck. <laughs> oh my nice. god, how hard was the pack out carrying that much shit out? You know, it wasn't a long distance, but I was over. I had too much weight. I had, I had a rear quarter, which is. Probably close to 100 pounds. Um, I had all my gear, my gun, and then I had the rack. So I probably had 150 pounds on my back. And, like, it's fun for the first 10 seconds. And then very quickly it goes from that was fun and now I actually have to do this. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. <clears throat> yeah. And now I have to go uphill. Um, yeah, my legs were shaking. I got the nest chicken legs. So I was absolutely <coughs> just quivering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all all you guys got those skinny little chicken legs. Dude, it's amazing. quivering, quivering. My legs were quivering. That's so funny. It was sweet too because in the midst of him doing all this, you know, um, we knew that he was out doing it because it was your first time mm-hmm. trying to shoot a bull, and so like there was a whole family group text of people that were just like waiting to hear news and everything, and we had gotten the update from Mariah, his girlfriend, that he hadn't shot one yet. And that he was going back out, and everyone was, like, kind of praying for him and crossing our fingers and waiting. And then we got a text message from Mariah at, like, 7.30 p.m. Because you had Garmin in reached mm-hmm. her and told her. And all we got was a text that says, Mike shot a bull. I love how excited you guys are about this. Because yeah. I, I, I know that you guys, you know, ducks are just as exciting, but. I love that you guys are so excited for me. Oh, you know? dude. And I it's <laughs> like, dude, so many people go out and just shoot elk, like, and they don't even they don't even think about it, but it's pretty cool to, like, really be grateful for it and then harvest the meat and eat the meat for the entire year. And, like, yeah. it's, it's such an experience from, like, I got my tag for next year. You put in for it in, I think, beginning of April was the deadline. And then I just found out, like, two weeks ago. So it's a raffle. So it's like it's all Even year. for residents? It's, yep. Mm. Oh, is so that because of the area you're doing it in? Depends on the unit, for sure. You can get over-the-counter tags, but the unit I'm in, they actually are not doing over-the-counter rifle tags anymore. So <laughs> it's just it's such a process, you know, oh, yeah. from April. Like, you're thinking about your next hunting season, and then to have it all kind of come mm-hmm. to life and have that experience was super cool. So <laughs> One of our buddies at First Light, Logan, he was telling me that they downloaded an app that tells you when thing like tags are up to like ready to buy. Onyx does that, don't they? Onyx does it too. I'm not sure. I know there's an Instagram page that does it. And yeah, that's well the one they, with the app. They downloaded an app <coughs> to let them know like okay, you can go get your antelope tag, you yeah. know, and you can go do this and they tell you like how many preference points to mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. to know if you like what are your percentages yeah. of okay. getting it that's to a like genius idea especially for people that travel and hunt. And that's the thing is I'm hunting local. Yeah. So I only have to focus on this one thing, this mm-hmm. one area pretty much where like, you know, you guys and, and other people that travel and hunt, that's that's a full time job keeping track yeah. of well it's like when even, to apply, uh, what to apply for and I hunted South Dakota <coughs> three years ago now for waterfowl. For, no, for, two years. Maybe it was three years ago. I, I don't three years know. ago. And you have to apply for your tag before july 15th or something like that mm-hmm. and they only give out a couple thousand tags for out of staters and it's a lottery still yeah and it's just like it comes across my my thought process like 
July 30th every year. I'm like, damn it. Missed it. I missed it. It pisses me off. Because my dad lives in South Dakota. Mm-hmm. So I would love to take him on some slews out by him. You know, where it's like not a whole lot of work and yeah, whatever. Otherwise, he has to get an out-of-state Minnesota tag, which costs a shitload of money yeah. for three days. It's just like... <sighs> Yeah. Plus, the bird hunting is so much better in South Dakota. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, I want to go. Yeah. Bad. But, <clears throat> no, I, I really am stoked for you. I was so pumped to hear that. Just, I've I've always wanted to shoot an elk really bad. They're just beautiful. Yeah. And the antlers are huge. 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 Meat, and it's man. like some of the best meat. So good. Such it's an like experience. elk, moose, antelope yeah. are just like incredible meat. Yep. So good. Yeah, I've been put in for moose. So you can do... You have a lot of meese by you? We have a lot of moose, man. Nice. So I've been put in for a cow moose. Um, and that you can pull in about five to eight years. So you, you take a preference point for five or eight years and... Fuck. For a resident. <coughs> for, for a, resident, a cow. Yeah. For a cow. A bull, once in a lifetime tag, you might never get it. You could apply for it. And here's the other thing. With moose, you have to pay for the preference point. So it's 50 bucks every year the point and then once you pull the tag it's probably another 80 for a resident but well it's not so bad not too bad i mean they're huge dude. like because what's a resident years. tag for uh elk where you're at it was about about 70 bucks this year because i know in colorado for out of stayers it's like, it's an like 700 1400 yeah, i think it's 800 for the tag but that's nuts but that's you know then you drive and you have all this camping you're driving you got to stay somewhere while you're yeah. there you got to get all the equipment to camp out there it just seems like dude people are a so dumb lot. Lot. they oh. just buy a tag and they have no clue what they're doing they just come out there they go to Walmart and buy a tent and just it's ridiculous the amount of people that do that is crazy no way no i swear to god out of staters <clears throat> dude or in, even residents no no residents, out of staters yeah. a lot of tent sales a lot of Walmart a lot of people from minnesota <laughs> not kidding a lot of minnesotans um at Walmart, <laughs> you looked over like, yeah. yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, at Walmart, getting, I think, my duck tag. And so this is like, yeah, probably September because that's when the bow hunters are there. And a lot of people go there and they'll just buy whatever tag they can get, which is mostly bear tag is the only bear, only tag that most people can just go and buy. People drive into town and they're just like, what can I shoot? What can I shoot? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> she's like, well, you want to get a bear tag? He's like, yeah. What kind of bear do you all have? It's like... <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> there's, 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 you know, black bear are predominantly in that area yeah. only. There's no grizzlies. There's no brown bears. So there's no polar bears. Um, <laughs> so Good, I was it's just, wondering. It's just funny. People don't even know what they're shooting or what they can get. They just drive there and they're like, yeah, whatever you'll sell me and buy everything from Walmart. Damn. Fuckers. Holy shit. <laughs> Clear out our Walmart. By the way, Micah, uh, we actually do have a discount code for our Onyx. And yeah. it's MWF twenty. Twenty so percent off. Do you so use if you it? have one. I don't. So no, you, I'm happy to pay full price. Are it's you? a hell of a service. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're listening out there and you want to save twenty dollars. Some of us want to do the right thing. You know. <laughs> just, pay <full. laughs> just pay full. You know, Onyx gives us the discount code, right? Hmm? Onyx actually gives us the discount code. Yeah. Yeah, so you can use it. I, so they're I like probably fine should with it. do that, yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah, like you should delete what right. you have right now and then resign. Oh, my back save up. maps? No, no, no. It's just like you cancel your membership and then okay. resign up. What's Sorry, your favorite you go. <laughs> I'm coming back. What's your favorite thing about Onyx? Or what's the most useful thing you've used? Scouting areas you've never been to. Yeah. By far. Have you used recent imagery at all? No. I'm I'm probably the most basic, ill informed Onyx user in the entire world. Yeah. I know how to do line distance. Which is helpful, point. and I know how to do waypoints. Yeah. And I won't lie, that's about all you need. I know there's all kinds of good <laughs> gadgets. And do you use it as an, do you download it as offline maps? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a game changer. Big time. Dude, I, uh, <coughs> if you have an Elite membership, they came out with uh, an app called Onyx You guys have Fish. discounts for the Elite? Yeah. Yeah, same, same discount. Yep, it's 20, 20% off. Um, they just came out with Onyx Fish. So it mm-hmm. gives you all the depths. Like Navionics. It's like Navionics. But, kind of but like off. actually yeah. good. But like good. It's yeah. right, actually. It's, it's right. right. Yeah. yeah. I've had that problem. I used it this past weekend and it was really good. Mm-hmm. Nice. Because I'm a big ice fisherman. Yeah. I ice fish a lot out there. So I've tried to use the some of the apps. and it's Navionics fell off about six years yeah, ago. Yeah, it did. What happened? Mm-hmm. 
don't know. I think they just made their money and said, fuck it. Probably. Turned into, like, boat. Boat. <laughs> boat maps. That's, like, the name of the app. It's, like, boat maps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't so much geared towards, like, getting you the real information yeah. about certain depths and stuff. I, I will say, too, I think a lot of the lakes in Minnesota are probably more consistent depths than the reservoirs in Colorado that yeah. rely on well, snow they melt. Them and well, they rely on snow melt for mm. their level. And then if the river's low, you know, they, they supply all the water to a lot of the rivers, so... It's damn controlled. So if it's a really dry year, they'll let a bunch out. So then come wintertime, your water level's 30 feet off from what it says on the boat map, and you kind of lose yeah, that. Yeah, 30 no. foot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I 30 saw foot a, difference in I height. saw a 60 foot difference at a reservoir last year. Holy shit. From what it was saying on the map. It's a lot. Yeah. What are you catching on those? Lakers. Lake trout. Lakers, bud. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Big boys. Yeah, for sure. Caught a couple nice ones. In the mountains. Do you mm-hmm. have to use a, a bigger auger to get those through? Or do I, you use double drill? You can't double drill in Colorado. Why? Because Minnesota is very consistent ice. It's cold, and it doesn't snow that much. So the ice is ice the whole way through. Where yeah. in Colorado, it'll you know the sun's really intense. So yep. you'll get a little bit of ice, and then you'll get snow. And then it'll get really hot, and then it'll turn into slush, and then it'll freeze on top of it. So you have all these really inconsistent layers of ice. Um, so what, they just say it's dangerous, or what? I don't, I guess. You, like, no one drives trucks on lakes. Oh, well, no. But, like, that's what we grew up doing, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Turn the heat on in your truck, and you sit on the side of it. And yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you roll out there with your windows down. and Yeah. Drill a hole and Good drop times. a line. Um, but you can't double drill. Portable so ice. I have an 8-inch auger, and you're... You can get a big fish out through an eight-inch hole. Yeah. Because what do we use here, Carter? I use eight-inch, but eight some inch. people use six. Yeah. Ten. Tens are like the ions, you know. The remember, remember we were on the the lake that we the lake that we grew up on, mm-hmm. um, and you had that hand drilling auger, yeah. dude. I just wanted to kill. What myself. a nightmare, bro. Well, that would do fine in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Well, thirty inches of ice is not fun. No. No. Well, how thick is the ice out there? Eight. Yeah. Assuming it's good ice. Yeah, we'll get, it'll, no, we'll get 12-inch ice for sure. You know what I remember? But it's about soft ice. <laughs> that was the first time I took a dip was with Joey out ice fishing on on the lake. Really? Really? Yeah. Like you had some of mine? You throw I got a pouch, yeah. Oh, hmm. yeah, I nuked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember. For about 10 minutes, man, it was the best day of my life. <laughs> yeah, great. That this initial, that first nicotine buzz. Great. Crazy. Your parents are going to really like me. That's fine. Yeah. That's nice. A lot worse your your blood, that. they really can't do much with it. Yeah, they can give me a good talking to. That's fine. You've had a few. Yeah. Definitely had a few. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I don't There's think your parents ever spanked me, though. Oh no. God. Screamed at you a lot. Oh, though. God. <laughs> Remember when Joey threw that baseball and hit the side of mom's van? Yeah. It was the bag. It was the bag. It's the back. It was the trunk. That van. Yeah, that was so funny. Well, Hold if you were van. better at catching grounders, we wouldn't have had that problem now, would we have? Do you want us to turn Cal into a new <laughs> Did Cal cry when that happened? Probably. Probably. Honestly. <laughs> big <laughs> crier. He broke her mom's back. Cal, Cal has Cal a lot of emotions. <laughs> Cal has a lot guy. of emotions. Emotional guy. Yeah. Very in touch with his feminine side. And now that's great. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Great man Especially, because of it. Yeah. Very empathetic. Yeah. It's good. important. Well, he's, yeah. you know what? He's a father now, so kind of have an excuse to be that way. I just started getting like this. Yeah. After <laughs> after I had my kid, I just it's Man, more I emotional. Just, yeah. I just like cry randomly. <laughs> I swear, Isaac said that. I've never said that confidently. <laughs> 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 I was emotional before. It's fine. Yeah. True. Yeah. But you've been crying a lot, Joe? <laughs> no, with my first kid, I cried quite a bit, and then I cried when my son was born. Uh, but Bob. no, I don't really, uh, yeah, Robbie John, Bob. Little, little Bobby, little Bob. Um, but no, I don't really cry a whole lot. I probably cry like two times a year, sure. maybe three. And it's usually out of like stress, you know? Yeah. You no. cry two to three times a year based on stress. Yeah. It's usually around tax time. <laughs> yeah. It's usually around my birthday. Yeah. That's tough. Well, like back in the day when I would work my ass off all spring and summer and fall, and yeah. then you have no work during the winter. And then all of a sudden you have to pay taxes on yeah, what you, you made that made year. And I'm yet? just like, I have no money. How am I going to pay these taxes? Yeah, so you're bad at financial So you're planning. just learning about taxes now. <laughs> no, I was saying back then. Oh, okay. Back then. That's when I would cry a couple times a year. The lessons were really hard back then. Yeah. 
I don't. I pay this. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Wait, taxes are twenty-two percent. What the fuck? <laughs> oh shit! I gotta do that every year. I have two grand in my Wait, bank account. I gotta do account. this next year too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This doesn't just cover me for a while. Oh yeah. god! I know you hunt a lot of rivers. Yeah. Yep. That's a different game. For sure. Super tiny. Shoot a lot of golden eye. You get you get sick of golden eye. That's what you said Here's last a, year. I love golden eye. I don't love eating them. So it's hard for me. Yeah. To go out every weekend and shoot totally. only golden eye that totally. I don't like to eat. Totally. Are they commons? Yep. Yep. Yeah. They're huge out there. They're huge, man. In the They're West. so pretty They're too. Huge. I was out by you a couple years ago and there were so many commons out there. I was just yeah. waiting for a barrows. Yeah. I thought one was a barrows, so I shot it. And I'm just like, damn it. We'll we'll shoot barrows, but mostly commons. And then, you know, a couple What more else do you shoot? Well, Widgeon? Yeah. Yeah, Widgeon are out there for sure. That's like seen more of them in the last 2 years, which has been cool cuz I love Widgeon. They're super fun birds. They they really work like crazy. Oh, yeah. I feel like like They'll circle you 40 times before, and then all of a sudden it's like, there, here they are. Yeah, um, they give it up. We'll get, you know, we'll get spoonies. We'll get teal. Blue, spoonies are Blue fun. and green. Yeah, I love spoon tang. Um, widgeon, mallards. Got, Hotel uh, mallards. Hmm? Hotel mallards. Hotel mallards. Yeah. And then divers, I've shot one redhead, and I've shot one canvas back. Nice. So, yeah. Um, wouldn't pintail? have expected their canvas Never back seen there. a pintail. I've never shot a pintail. Right? Yeah, it came us back way back there, huh? It's so out of the way. So it's kind of funny that there are ducks there at all that are just like, where did you come from? Like, you're at 8,000, 9,000 feet, right? Like, it's, yeah. how'd you get up here? But never shot a pintail ever in my life. Or a wood duck. Yeah, we don't. What? What? Yeah, I know. What? Yeah. You never shot a woody? Never shot a woody. Really? Shot almost everything That blows else. my mind. And you grew up hunting here. Yeah. That's like, crazy. Yeah, I don't think you can call yourself a Minnesotan. Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> oh my god! You've never shot a wood duck. <laughs> well, we have so many here. Like, yeah, that's crazy. To yeah, me. I, don't I know. like don't even know if I can remember an opener where we didn't shoot a wood duck. The last three, we shot one. Not maybe not this past year, but the year before that, I shot one, and the year before that, you shot one. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, I can pull up pictures. It was like. Three openers in a row that we didn't shoot a Woody. Hmm. Remember that one that we put the dive bombs out on the sandbar and you doubled up on that Woody mm-hmm. on camera? That was the last time we shot Woody's at opener. You think so? For, for real. Yeah. Damn. Because I, th- I think about it every year. I'm like, are we going to shoot a Woody this year? Yeah. You've shot Woody's in fields before. That's fun. That's normal. Yeah, but that's that never cool. on opener. No, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, Woody's in the field are that sounds super fun. ridiculous. Very They're fun. so hungry. Really? Just corn gods. <laughs> So if you find like a cut cornfield before, I don't know, end of October, you're gonna bang yeah. the woodies. Bang never bang. Sh- never shot a band either. First birds you'll see one day. <laughs> keep tacking, same, bro. Away, keep tacking away at them. I you could just buy them though too, can you? That's, that's what bang. Joey did last <laughs> yeah, year. That's what Joey yeah. does, or yeah. what? That's what I did last year. Yeah. Yeah. Get a no, clout. I got I got pretty lucky on the bands last year. Really? Yep. I shot uh, six goose bands. Nice. That was good. Year. That's cool. I've heard about some guys shooting stuff out there. <clears throat> out in Colorado? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Where are they coming from? Or where were their bands from? Um, Canada? No. No, some of them are banned. A lot of them are banned locally. Oh, okay. So maybe two hours away. But like a 16-year-old goose. Like, it's crazy. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, sick. Wild. And it yeah. got banded two hours away. But it was like 16 years old. Yeah. One of those geese that just never left? Just came into the wrong field at the wrong time. <laughs> Or probably had been doing it for 16 years and yeah. wasn't the one that got shot. But Yeah. Yeah. Damn. This dude over by a lake over there shot a uh, backpack tracker mallard, hen mallard. Nice. Damn. That'd be sick. What was the data on it? I don't know. I never, I wasn't like super close to them, but he just showed me some pictures. Nice. But. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always interested to see where they come from. Yeah. How old they are. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Crazy. What's the old oldest band you've seen, Joey? <laughs> That I've was it seen personally. Shot? Was it that one we shot with Bob? That 15-year-old spec? It was either that. I wanted to say at the time the goose was either 14 or 16. So, But it's probably that spec. The 15-year-old spec we shot in Kansas, and it was from Anchorage, Alaska. That's insane. It was crazy. No, it was like 6,800 miles. 
from where it was banded. And it had done that. And they go further south, so they go to either Louisiana or Texas or wherever. And so it was just coming down. Have you seen some of those things that, like, the the speed records for mallards have, like, been kind of broken recently? No. Like a migrating mallard, and it was, like, over 100 miles an hour. Holy shit. With a tailwind. And they were able to... Probably with a backpack tracker, mm-hmm. tra- track speed. Yeah, because it yeah. pings. Hundred miles. There was an hour. um, there was a bird that they had just tracked recently. I don't know. I think it, I think it was a diver, but it had done like, I almost should just look it up so I don't fuck it up. But it had done like a thousand or a couple a couple thousand miles, mm-hmm. and it was going an average speed of like seventy two miles an hour or something. It's insane. Crazy. It's freaking nuts. This year I went to. Uh, uh, you've actually never hunted there, but it's that picture the with Cal, Isaac, and I. Um, there were, like, no ducks around that day or the day before. I went out and scouted. There was nothing there, and then we had some weather pushing in, and there were twenty to 30,000 ducks the next day in Same. that on that lake, and I'm like, holy shit. So I called my buddy. I'm and like, you need, to, you need to get up here now. And so he comes up there, and, like, they had pretty much all gone. I mean, there were really? there were still like that a couple quick. thousand, you know, around, but they weren't like they were that first day, where it's just mm-hmm. like, let's pick out all green, you know, because there were just so many ducks. Yeah. I'm like, let's just pick out all green. And they're like, and then uh, in the middle of the hunt, they were like, I ran into some guys at the launch, and they helped me with their boat, and then their boat died, and so I helped them with their boat, and so <laughs> we all go to this public land spot, and uh, super cool dudes. And uh, halfway through the hunt, I'm like, let's pick out all drakes. We saw a shitload of teal right away in the morning. We shot a couple, and I was like, okay, let's stick to mallards on the rest because there's just mallards everywhere. Yeah. And we're seeing divers. We're seeing specks. We're seeing lesser geese. Like, we're seeing every species of duck. And I was like, no, 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 don't shoot those. Those are all hens. And then halfway through the hunt, they're like, man, we've never shot a limit before. And I was like, oh, my oh, God, just start with that. Freaking shoot everything, Yeah. you know? But then next day, ran into him again, and then we just hunted together again with my buddy, and we only shot, like, nine for the four of us. Touch him. Well, you know? But I, they they really cruise mm, to I get to where they want to go. this up, by the way. Um, yeah, in 2017, a hen pintail flew from Bristol Bay, Alaska, to the central Oregon coast, which is 1,900 miles, made it in 27 hours, averaged 70 miles per hour. That's yeah. insane. That's insane. 27, 27 hours straight of flying going 70 miles an hour. Probably not even fly. I mean, they probably just get into these winds. I'm sure, man. Yeah, they just get into, yeah. just cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Jet streams. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm crazy. I can't remember. What's that? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what the average. They've seen geese at 30,000 feet up. That's insane. Yeah. Which is just crazy. And, Flying you know, there's obviously plane, jet yeah. streams up there because yeah. their planes go through them. It's insane, actually, though. Just thinking about that. Like, you drive your car 70 miles an hour. I mean, driving your car for 27 hours straight at that speed, that'd be insane. <coughs> yeah. And they're flying. I've always wanted to be a bird. Yeah, what a you life. Know, just fly. Just to see it. But it's also how terrifying. terrifying. You're up, like, ten to 30,000 feet in the air, and you're just can't see shit you know it's dark out <laughs> you're just following the You've wind really thought about this huh oh many yeah. many times. dream dream the amount wasn't like a i wish i was a bird this was like but imagine how actually scary it your would feathers be. you'd Dude, have to I use mean, your feathers to your, stop and your brain is the size of a pea and you're just like cruising through the night what in the life. air just because you're just like i gotta go gotta go it's cold <laughs> i gotta go. go and then all of a sudden you're like i'm here no. Yeah, it's trippy, trippy dude. But yeah, I've had a lot of dreams about being a bird. Hmm. Yeah, usually in the raptor species. Interesting. It's like the raptor. Eagle. Eagle. Yeah, like an eagle or a hawk yeah. or that'd be sick. Osprey. Dude, I've, I've had some weird dreams about yeah. it. Where it's like, sounds like it. Obviously, I don't believe in reincarnation, but it's just like, was I a bird in a past life? <laughs> like this is like, it felt way too real. Of course, you like realistic. think you were an no eagle shit, too. right? Yeah. No, I wasn't like a crow. I was a fucking bald <laughs> eagle. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yo, yeah. Here Master I am. of the sky. Here I am. What what kind of a dream would that be? Right. If you're just like ah! you're just like a on crow. the road, just eating a dead rabbit that's Some been there Oreo. for 15 days. It's like wake up. I was a crow in my past life. <laughs> I dream suck. big. 
I dream really big. Oh, yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> a pigeon. <laughs> you would be a, a good fucking pigeon. highway pigeon. Be you would have been a great pigeon. I'd be a fucking rafter bird <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, doubt. fresh spilled corn. <laughs> Shovel my face. Now. Who's this asshole with the dog standing right next to the silo? I'm going to go fly right up to it. It's me. It's you. Ten. Dude, Riley. Old gray beard, huh? Dude, she's like 12. Crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. She's really slowing down. She's got tumors all over her. Sure. Oof. She's got one really bad tooth. I got a... Are you going to old yeller? I don't know if I Jesus. can, personally. What? <laughs> well, you just you asked him about this guy's dog. Well, yeah. yeah. It's about getting a good dog. Been a great yeah, dog. No. I Well, think about it this way, Cal. So, um, have you ever seen a dog get put down? Yeah. No. Okay, so how they do it is you go into the vet. Sedate them. And you put them on a cold stainless steel table. Yeah. The dog's freaked out because they don't like going to the vet. For sure. Right? And so their last moments alive are scared. Well, they do a sedation, so a lot of them chill out. Yeah. But. Yeah, but. That being you know, sad. they're still getting a needle shoved into them on a stainless steel table. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you're like petting them and you're crying in the. In the office. And I get it. And there's dogs you don't do it for, but I feel like if any dog, a lab is is one that... To go to the vet? No, to go out old yeller. Yeah. Like, maybe not a chihuahua, but... Yeah, maybe a not a Finn. Maybe not Finn. We'll take him to the vet. Holy shit. <laughs> We're definitely not having this convo. We'll let him play <laughs> in the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. No, we'll play hopscotch. That's... All right, shit, dude. But, Easy, um... No, yeah, I... I've... A good thought, dog. I thought about it quite a bit because I almost put Riley down two weeks after I got her. I bought her off of Craigslist for 150 bucks. They're like, yeah, we'll send you the papers via email. They never sent them. I'm mm-hmm. like, what's up? I got to give them to the vet. And they're like, we actually never had the papers. I was like, sick. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Your problem now. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Got her for 150 bucks off of Craigslist. <laughs> Cal and I were going to split it, and he reneged on the deal. Let me tell you this happened. I feel like I've already told this before. Joey walks in the door one day. One day. And he's like, we should get a dog. And we're like, yeah, maybe. That'd be cool, man. We could figure that out, maybe. And then that's it. That's the only convo we had about it. And then next week, Joey calls us and he's like, hey, I bought a dog. So it was 150 bucks. So, you know, we split that, yada, yada. And we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why well, didn't you just split 150 bucks? Those were dark times. No, huh? no, it was, it was, they were dark times, but <laughs> like food and vet bills, whatever. Yeah. We talked yeah. about, more than once getting a house dog. Mm-hmm. Not true. One time. One time is all. I mean, you're related to him. True. How many times do you know that you said something? And he's like, didn't happen. He didn't cry when you brought her home, did you? <laughs> no, but he did scare the shit out of the dog, and she pissed on the floor and ran away. She tried to bite him. That wasn't the first day. That was the day that I went home, and it was just me that I got home. Remember? And you were like, can you let my dog out? No, I watched it. No, I was in the back room with her. Whatever, well, anyway. Anyways. She tried to kill me that day. She wanted to kill me for sure. Anyway. All right, should we draft? No. I was going to finish the story. Oh. I was going to finish my story, if that's okay. Oh, shit. Not a good enough story? I honestly... Oh, it's it, cool. Try to reel me back in. So, how I almost put her down two oh, weeks yeah, after yeah, getting yeah, her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, reel um, me back in. So, you know, it's my first time owning my own dog. Mm-hmm. I'm 20 years old. And we're living together in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. So, it's in the middle of the city. And uh, letting her out, I'm, like, trying to teach her, but she's already nine months old. So she's, like, already got bad habits, got the shit kicked out of her by the old owner. And so she's she's a rescue dog. And uh, all of a sudden, she's limping. Like, within two weeks of getting her. And I'm, like, what in the world? And then she peed in her kennel. And I'm, like, what's going on? So I'm, like, let's go outside. Let's go outside. And she just, like, won't move. Mm-hmm. And she starts screaming, like, screaming bloody murder. I found out that she had, like, this huge blood blister on her, like, front leg. I'm like, what in the world? So I carry her outside. She goes to the bathroom again. And then I'm, like, trying to get her to walk. Nothing. So I called my friend who was a vet tech, and she's like, oh, uh, just try popping the blood blister. I was like, okay. She freaked out. The dog tried to bite me. I'm like, sick. And a bunch of, like, pus and blood came out. And I'm like, hmm. You know, in a couple of days, like, she, she will not walk on her leg. And I'm like, what in the world? So then I finally take her to the vet. They charged me 400 bucks for x-rays. 
So already over the price of what I paid for the dog, mm-hmm. and I'm pissed. And they're like, ah, you know, <coughs> Joey, uh, don't know what it is. Uh, it could be the bones rubbing together. Uh, but, you know, we'll we'll have to do an invasive surgery, and it's going to cost $2,900. And I go, oh, I'm good. She goes, what do you mean? Like, she said it's so smugly, like, I'm going to pay it no matter what. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, yeah, we have to figure out what's causing the issue with the surgery. Mm-hmm. So I was like, so you're not even going to fix it? And she's like, no, we have to figure out what's going on because the x-rays didn't tell us enough. And I was like, cool, I just paid 400 bucks for those x-rays, and I'm not paying that bill. I'll just put her down. And the woman was, like, mortified <laughs> that I said that. And I'm like, I can't afford it. Yeah. You know, I'm 20 years old, and I bought this dog. I shouldn't even bought the dog. She's like, well, you know, we have a payment plan. I was like, absolutely not. She's like, well, I mean, you're really going to shoot the dog? I was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> She's like, well, well, at least give it two weeks. Two weeks of carrying this dog outside to go to the bathroom. I was like, she would, like, kind of start to walk on it, and then I'd have to get her out the door. I'd have to carry her out mm-hmm. to the lawn to pee, and I'm just like, this is ridiculous. You don't remember this? I remember. Okay, thank you, because you were so surprised when I started the story. But And then day before two weeks, I'm like, dude, I have to put the fucking dog down. This is awful. Like, I love this dog. Yeah. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to put her down, and I'm crying the entire time I'm thinking about it. I'm like, this is awful. And uh, I envisioned... You know, like, just making so much meat and, like, playing with her in the yard, whatever, but she couldn't play at that time. Yeah. So I was just going to give her so much human food that was so good, and then she was going to pass out in my lap. And then uh, next day, sick. next day, she was totally fine, the day I was going to put her down. Really? Yep. I was going to drive her out to a farmer that I had permission on. I, I was going to, like, cook up a steak on his grill, everything. Huh. Well, it was meant to wild. Be. It was wild, Glad so I didn't have didn't. to do it. And, uh, and... Now that I've spent so many years with her, I'm like, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. I've had to put down dogs before working on farms and then uh, for friends of friends that were just like, I don't have anywhere to do this. And, you know, I don't want them to be scared on the vet table. And so I put down people's dogs for them just because. Just a little side job. I didn't get paid anything. (laughs) It's just like, (laughs) yeah, I'll help you out, man. So that they get one last good day with their dog and they're playing with them in a big yard, whatever. Yeah. I hate. I hate it, dude. Even if it's not my dog, I'm like, this is awful. I hated it every single time. Guys, I just want to talk to you about the other sponsor of our podcast today. It is First Light. And Micah being a Westie, the Westie that he is, I'm sure you've seen a lot of First Light out there, haven't you? Okay? But I'm sure you haven't seen a whole lot of their waterfowl shit. No. And let me tell you, it's the shit. Yeah. It's not just waterfowl shit. It's the shit. You know, it's good shit. Mm Mm-hmm. And what's mm-hmm. really cool is we have a hand in helping them make the waterfowl products better. So, like, before they go into production, we get a piece of it, and we tell them what's good or what's not good, and mm-hmm. they, like, actually change it. If you ever need my advice, too, just send me something, and I'll let yeah. you know. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll I'll get you on the payroll. <laughs> no doubt. It's perfect. I'll give you my opinion. It's yeah. good. Yeah. It's good. Hey, Stuff's I need good. A, I need Stuff's a good. triple good. extra large tall for a guy who's 140 <laughs> yeah. pounds. But six, he's six foot seven. That's so challenging. <laughs> that is really funny, though. I won't name names, but I bought some waiters the other wor- the other year, and nice waiters, spendy waiters. Um, and he and just looked like the Michelin they fit man in him. The California King down south, like these are Texas <laughs> double X's. These aren't joking, big boys. I called them because I was like, no man would fit in these. It was ludicrous, man. Like, I'm not big by any means, but like, I've seen big. And these waiters, the the girth on them, just stouts. Dude, I called them. I Cow was, waiter. I, not because I was. I'm not the type of guy. I, I'm probably like you. I buy things. I don't return them. I'm gonna Correct. use them. Right. Someone will use them. Use Someone, Someone will use, use them. Probably me. Will they fit? No. Will I like them? No. But I won't <laughs> return them. So I called them and I was like, I just want to let you know, like, you guys really need to figure out your waiter thing because these would fit a 600 pound man. Like these are your XLs. This is a 600-pound man. Well, that's she, John Boy from Alabama. And she legit was like, no, I hear you. Like, people call a lot about this. <laughs> she was like, really? She was like, I don't I, I don't have any voice, but I'll I'll leave them a message that you said this. And they can so go, do you still have those? Yeah. That's what you wear? Yeah, they got a waiter belt. You know what I mean? I cinch that motherfucker tight. And is there, like, just fabric? Just Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you wear four jackets, 
It doesn't look as weird. Underneath them. Yeah. Do you just put a bungee cord around your chest? <laughs> Fuck I it. swear to God. <laughs> I need two waiter belts. One at the belt and, and one up at the nipples. So. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible, That's hilarious. man. But she was then, just funny. She was like, oh, yeah, this again. <laughs> yeah, this is not a human that could fit in these. No, the literal Michelin man so, can fit in that. that being said, love to try some first light out. Yeah. There you go, buddy. You need to. Firstlight.com. Um, Micah, thanks for coming, dude. Thanks for having us, guys. It's been a blast, man. Yeah, it was fun. You'll have to come back the next time you're in town. I love you, Micah. Quit dodging us. Love you guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Love you, bro. Ooh, a little outro music. Micah, have you heard this? Mm -hmm. No, but it's nice. Well, it's Al Camo Young. And the thing is, if you're ever having a bad day, and you put this on, well, one of two things. It's either just going to make you more mad, or you're going to be like, this (laughs) is, I'm fine now. Oh, good now. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Be sure to leave a review, like, comment. Don't subscribe, though. We hate that. And um, one more thing, by the way. 